You know you come here often enough when you automatically know where the beer is. Good use of a wedding ring. Oh my God, I'm in trouble now. Hi guys, Isaac Toops here from New Orleans, Toops Meter in Toops South, here at the Vice Munchy Studio cooking up boudin. So boudin, if you don't know what it is, is a Cajun sausage that's already cooked when it's put into the side of the casing. So it's pork butt that's braised down, mixed with liver, rice, seasoning, and the Cajun trinity. Let's get to it. First, we got our Boston butt right here, otherwise known as pork shoulder. I forget why they call it the butt, but it's hilarious. We're gonna take our butt, we're gonna give it a good slap, because <laughs> I'm jackass. And we're gonna give it a good score, about an inch deep. Nice sharp knife. And then we're gonna really season it pretty aggressively since this is a lot of meat and we're only seasoning the outside. Good fresh ground black pepper and really try to get it into the crevices. Season both sides up pretty good. Give it a good rub, give it a good pat, give it a good smack. Unsimmer mostly, plop it in your Dutch oven and off to the oven. We're gonna park that guy in the oven for 45 minutes to get some really good color and caramelization on it. It's gonna bring out all that good flavor. While our butt's roasting, tee hee, we're gonna chop up our vegetables. And we got the Cajun Trinity right here. We got the father, the onion, we got the sun, the bell pepper, and the Holy Spirit, the celery. But don't forget the Pope, and the Pope is the garlic. Yes, I'm using all this garlic. Get over it. The important thing about our vegetables is you cut them all about the same shape. And since it's all being ground up and roasted pretty hard anyway, keep them pretty large. So we're gonna keep them to an inch to about a half an inch pieces. There's a couple of seeds, I don't even worry about it. Not a big deal. Celery time. Woo! Needs ranch. Now that we got our bell pepper, onion, and celery, the Cajun Trinity is very similar to the French mirepoix, except we substitute the bell pepper for carrot because bell peppers grow in Louisiana. And yes, 90 cloves of garlic. No, I'm not joking. No, I'm not being a jerk. Use a lot of garlic, you will not be disappointed. Cajuns are very useful for what they have around them. It's why we use sugar cane, it's why we use crawfish, it's why we use pigs. It's naturally all around us. Uh, the Native Americans in South Louisiana were gatherers. They didn't even have to grow stuff. They could just go out in the field, find something and get it. It's great, we still utilize that to that day. All right. Now that we got our pork butt roasted off for 45 minutes, got some nice color on it. We're gonna deglaze with some beer. Some beer. <laughs> Never met a pig that didn't like a good couple of beers. Myself included. Gonna add our vegetables and some water. And back in the oven. Thank you. Now we're gonna let that cook for two and a half hours at 325 degrees. Meanwhile, it's beer 30. And just like that, it's done. Arch your back, always when lifting heavy. Oh, mama, that smells good. Be very careful, because this is very hot. I like to use the dual tongue technique. That smells real good, it smells like home. Boudin is a regional dish, Southwest Louisiana. And the reason you add rice to it, it's just because any poor community is gonna add, add things to stretch out your food. So back in the day to stretch out your boudin, stretch your sausage, you add rice to it to extend it so you can feed your family. Nowadays we do it for tradition and flavor and texture. It's just not boudin without the rice. I said so. I'm gonna strain out all the juice and all our veg. Look at all that garlic. We're gonna add some chicken liver. Now, traditionally, you would add pork liver. I like chicken liver. Chicken liver is a little calmer, and you could add more to it to cream it out. We're gonna pop these chicken livers back in the oven for just another 10 minutes. We're gonna cook them off till they're about medium. And then we're gonna take our juicy juice, set aside our vegetables, and we cook our rice in the juice. 
Now you'll notice this is way too much liquid for the amount of rice I put, which is just fine since we're not actually serving the rice. We're just cooking the rice till it's done and putting it in the boudin. So don't worry about the ratio here. I'm gonna bring your rice to a boil and then we're gonna simmer it for 10 minutes and then we're gonna let it rest for 10 minutes and it'll be properly cooked every time. Now we're gonna rough chop our cooked pork butt up so we can get it into the grinder. If you don't have a grinder, you can hand chop this up. It's just gonna take you a while. First, I'm gonna make sure you get this bone out. Now you know it's done when the bone just slips out. Now don't worry about chopping it up uniformly or evenly, since it's going through the grinder. Now you notice I'm not worrying about the fat because leave the fat on. A lot of people will skim this fat off because that's what they've been trained to do their entire life. Leave all the fat in the boudin, trust me, or else your boudin will be dry and I will judge you harshly. Let's get to grinding. And slowly but methodically, grind everything up. You're gonna to want to use your plunger. We're really looking for a, a rough grind. This can be use the largest die you have. If you have a professional meat grinder or have a buddy that has a professional meat grinder, tell them to grind the largest die. We really just want to kind of tear this up, not grind it fine. Yeah! Now we're grinding! This grinds a lot better hot, trust me. This is not like a traditional sausage where you want everything cold. Grind this shit up. I don't know why I'm yelling, it's kind of fun. I'm gonna pull the livers out. Now, I cook the livers to about medium. So about 135, but honestly, just when they have just a little bit of spring back and they're not all mushy. Grinder's getting a workout today. Yeah, just spit everywhere. The rice is done. I'm gonna turn our rice off and we're gonna let it rest. Look at me, I know how to use this thing. Now, it's very important. Any juices left over, add right back. All right, now that we have our massive bowl of destruction, uh, we're gonna add our seasonings and chop up our green onions. Green onions add this wonderful little zingy, bright, herbally pop of onion that I like to add at last minute. Now we wait for the rice to cook. Meanwhile, we're gonna add a little smoked paprika, a little cayenne pepper, of course. We're gonna add another big pinch of black pepper, another big pinch of salt. Now that we've got our rice cooked off, we're gonna strain just a li little bit of this stuff out. We're gonna add some more back. Now, this is good stuff. So make sure you wanna actually pour a good bit of that fat right on top of it. That's plenty. Don't throw away this stuff, it's good. I'm gonna take a mixer. Give this a good mix. Oh, that smells like heaven. So yeah, everybody's gonna have their own variant of boudin. As long as it's got some good pork loving in there, made a little rice, a little cauliflower, I don't hate on that. So boudin is what you make it, but classically, it's gonna be pork, liver, rice, and a lot of garlic. At this point, now that it's all mixed up and seasoned, ready to rock, you could put this out inside of a roasted chicken. You could slap it on some white bread. Traditionally, we would link it up or roll it into boudin balls. And one of my favorite ways to eat it, honestly, it's just like this. Mm. Happy dance. Do the happy dance. Now, if we're gonna link it up, you can pipe it into it right now while it's hot, and then we're gonna re-poach those links. If you're rolling the boudin balls, you have to lay it flat and let it cool completely before you roll them and before you fry them. If you try to fry them where they're hot, they're gonna blow up in your fryer and you'll be embarrassed. Now that the boudin is completely cooled off, I'm gonna roll it into little boudin balls, one and a half to two ounces, just try to keep them roughly the same size. Toss them in a little unseasoned breadcrumbs, please do not use Italian. Plain old breadcrumbs will work just fine. And again, you're gonna make sure this boudin is cold. Toss them in the bowl, make sure you give them a good coating. I actually like to pack some of it on, give them a little bit of roll. They don't have to be pretty unless you want them pretty. So this boudin is very delicate, so you have to be pretty baby hands with these things. So you don't want to pack them too tight. Now when you're frying these, you want to make sure you are very careful. Boudin has a lot of moisture and a lot of fat in it. So if you don't do this right, they can explode on you. So I like to set them in my little strainer and set them in. And let's pray to God. Pray to God! Good news, we're not blowing up. Yet. Oh yeah, babe.
golden, fried, and delicious. Boudin, a little Creole mustard aioli, otherwise known as mustard mayonnaise, and some pickles. And this is a wonderful Cajun snack. Thank you guys for joining me at Vice Studios. Over here in Brooklyn, I'm Isaac Tubes. We just made boudin. Love you guys.